Other travel vloggers like to give their first impressions of a country when they've just arrived or maybe they've been there a few days. Well, this video is different. We've actually been in Qatar for just over four months now, so this video is well and truly overdue. And it's not coming from somebody who's only just landed in a new country. Yeah. The truth is, no country's perfect, um, but what we want to do is point out some misconceptions people might have uh, that they might think is negative of Qatar and talk about the positives of that, if that makes sense. Now, just to remind you, we're actually living out in Mesaid, which is a 40 minute drive from Doha. If you follow us on Facebook, you would have seen some of our photos from our community where we live and some updates of our town. Basically, we just wanted to point out that our experiences might actually be a bit different from other people that have been to Qatar, um, just because we basically haven't been all over just yet. The first one, number one, it's hot. Very hot. It was no surprise that moving to the Middle East that it was going to be hot. And when we first arrived in August, it was consistently 40 to 45 degrees on a daily basis. Yeah, so it pretty much meant we just had to stick to air conditioning. So what we were doing is going straight from our house to our car to wherever it was we were going. It might be a shopping mall, um, pretty much shopping malls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't go to a park or a beach or anything like that. But it has actually really cooled down now. We're in December now and for the last two months the weather has just been absolutely perfect. Um, in the evenings we even have to put on a jacket because it actually cools down quite a bit. Yeah, it does, yeah. Okay. Next one. Number... Two? Three! Number three! We're in the... No, it's number... Number three? No, it's number two. Oh, number two. <laughs> it's number two. We're in the desert. It's the desert. The desert. Honestly, we were concerned that there wouldn't be too much for us to do around here, um, especially with the kids outdoors. But surprisingly, there are actually a lot of green spaces around. Even here in Mesaid, there's a local playground. And there's a lot of you other playgrounds around Doha that we can take the kids to. Yeah, and we actually wonder how they keep everything so green in these parks because it just gets so hot here. Yeah, it's quite amazing. <laughs> Traffic and driving can be crazy. So Lisa, how's driving in Qatar? It's the easiest place where you could drive, possibly in your whole life. <laughs> Not, it is crazy. <laughs> but they crash you with the stupid drivers and the shit. Coming from Australia, it is clear that the people here drive differently uh, and there's definitely a learning curve. People don't stick to the speed limits uh, and ignore road signs and honestly it feels quite dangerous at times. Um, people are impatient and yes, it can be very unsafe. But the good news is that once you actually get used to it, it's actually not too bad uh, and there are certain things that you can do to ensure your safety out there on the roads in Qatar. Yeah. If you'd like us to do a video about our driving in Qatar and our driving tips, let us know in the comments and we'll make a video about that for you. Oh, and also on the bright side, the roads are amazing. The highways can have up to six lanes and some of the intersections are incredible with multiple overpasses that allow you to drive around without really having to slow down too much. And our next one, number four, is it's expensive. But is it? Before we came to Qatar, all we read was that Qatar is an expensive country to live in. And I guess that really depends on where you're coming from. Uh, we come from Australia and we consider Australia to have a very high cost of living. So our opinion is actually different on this. Yeah, and to be fair, we think that Qatar is actually more affordable than Australia. Fruit and vegetables can actually be found to be cheaper depending on where the imports are from. Uh, petrol is definitely a lot cheaper than back at home. Eating out can be done cheaply as well. Yeah. If you want, Qatar can be a very expensive place to live if you're buying particular imported items. And there's certainly a luxurious side to Qatar. And obviously if you want to do those sorts of things, it is going to come at a cost. And when it comes to activities for the kids, there are expensive options and affordable options. Uh, we actually go to a place called Funville. We go there quite a lot. Um, they offer memberships for the soft playground and they also have a special on Mondays where they offer some of the rides are one real each, which is great. Yeah. And you've also got the parks around the country, which are obviously free, which is great. One of our favourites is at MIA Park in Doha. Number five, Qatar is family friendly. This is actually one of the things that we're happy to say that it is true. Culturally, there's a general acceptance that kids will be kids and nobody really bats an eyelid when they see kids out and about. 
Also, to make things better, kids are actually um, acknowledged by other people and people are generally really friendly towards them, so that makes for a really family environment. Yeah. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and you're going to want to subscribe to our channel. Coming up on our channel, we're going to have videos about the cost of living in Qatar and things to do in Qatar and we're going to share those videos as an ongoing series. Also, we're going to be sharing videos of places that we go to outside of Qatar. For example, we've recently been to Oman. So if these are things you're interested in, please subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. See ya. Bye.